On today's conversation, I chat with McKenna Amadi, a Flux Academy student who in about three years built himself with his partner, an award-winning web design agency, and proves that you can work with amazing clients all around the world, no matter where you are. Enjoy. McKenna, what's up? Thank you so much for joining us today. Excited to chat. Yeah, I'm excited as well. Um, it's, it's, it's great to you know, speak with you after such a long time as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're all right too. Fantastic. So I want to hear, I actually, you know, we we talked a couple of years ago. I saw you earlier in your journey. I'm so excited to see where you got to today. I would actually love to hear all your your story from the beginning. Like, how do you get into web design? Are you, you're in London right now yes, and London. your partner is in Lagos. How did you how did you start your studio? Like, how did that partnership came to be? I want to hear all about it. Right. So it kind of started from a friendship. So I basically had a, a close friend of mine. We initially met in London. Um, we both moved back to Lagos at some point. Um, and whilst we were in Lagos, um, she kind of started the studio. And she was primarily doing logo, color, typography, branding, packaging work. Um, and she used to, like, you know, send me her designs, obviously, just because we're friends and just, um, you know, kind of get some feedback and input. And I used to give her some feedback of, okay, why did you try this and that? She always kind of said I had an eye for design which was kind of a passive thing for me. I was kind of trying to start a company on my own whilst I was in Lagos and I wanted to basically make a website for it. So the first thing I found was like Squarespace and I was trying to use that to make it. It was kind of functional. So I sent it to her and she was like, this is pretty good. Like, you know, you should probably consider doing websites. And I was like, you're not serious. And what were you I, doing before, by the way? Um, So I, I basically have three engineering degrees. So I was meant to literally be that person who's like going to the office nine to five, you know, having an engineering job, which is kind of typical, of, you know, Nigerian kids. But yeah, that was basically, I was trying to start a company that was like engineering based to be honest she basically you know i mentioned you know try and pick that as an interest and i was like you know they're not being serious that's real people's money and I, i'm just doing this for myself um but she did have an inquiry for websites and she basically like you know messaged me and said would you be interested in this and initially my own thing was you know this is this is real this is somebody's money trying to pay for a full professional thing i'm just here playing around with squarespace i don't think you really want that but we did have the conversation. Um, it was for an e-commerce brand, fashion related. That never really panned out, but it kind of like made me a bit curious, you know, in terms of like, could this be a, a side thing, for example? Um, and then that, you know, I did a quick um, research, had a look around. Um, I'd always always had like an interest for computer science. And always when I was growing up, I wanted to actually study computer science. So anything that had to do with like computers always kind of like resonated me. So towards the turn of a new year, I kind of like made a resolution to myself as like, one of the things I want to learn in the new year is how to actually do proper web stuff. And then I had a quick look around I saw this thing that everyone was talking about. Um, I know there was a couple of things from Pixelgate on, on YouTube, on Webflow. I saw you as well. And I think one of the first things for me was like, if I was going to choose something to go into, I need somewhere where I can learn in a structured manner and in a, in a safer space. So obviously I knew I didn't want to learn coding, coding straight off from the bat. I just wanted something that was kind of like easy and relatable to use. And I found your platform, which was kind of like very structured. And when I did take a look at like, you know, the entire syllabus and, you know, how it was being structured, especially the community aspect, I think that was where I was like sold. Um, and I think, at that point you also doing like maybe like a new year's discount or something i was like yeah i have to jump on this and i basically you know took the course it, it went lovely paired with the webflow university which is also a fantastic resource you know i was able to like you know start making one or two things as well i think also to really commend the platform as well was the guidance i think one thing that really like you know shaped a bit of a deeper interest was um i don't really remember his name but i think his name was bob he was one of the people who you know when you're doing the course materials he would basically like give feedback on the sites you did um, and i know i did the site for my favorite club was arsenal and he gave me a couple of comments regarding the CSS um, and basically he was telling me like you know this is fine for Webflow but in the real world you might want to do this and it just kind of sparked a bit of interest of like okay how do I learn more so that really helped as well having that kind of guidance and obviously the community showing up to the two o'clock meetings every day or two o'clock UK Nigerian time um, that really also helped seeing other people's design and just you know trying to push forward from there but that's basically how I started so it started from a, a friend being curious and saying why did you try this and then you know me making a resolution to you know try it and then it just became something where it's like okay then obviously clients came there was money on the table and it's like okay this could be a so the of first project that you've done what was the first project so um it was uh, a website called not make a ginger it was for kind of a bakery it actually go how I, I think you did a review of it on, on your site that was one of the first sites I, um, and i think also for the finch with team did a, a, a thing on when they were having a youtube and basically the feedback i got from that was actually one of the, the financial parts of me thinking okay i can actually do this because when you start obviously you're not too sure whether you're really good enough um so seeing that my first site was basically like highlighted in that aspects it kind of made me feel like okay i could actually do this and i'm not i'm not bad at what i'm doing so yeah those were the, that was the first site i did um it was a bakery website for basically cakes and stuff uh, and, and that turned out really well so and so so from the beginning you had the partnership with your partner exactly, exactly. so 
she she how did she get lend that project or how did that project came to be in general was she taking care of all the client work and you were just partnering up on the development side of things yes yeah, so she already had like established relationships in terms of obviously this is what she was doing full time doing logo branding and all of that stuff and the brand was actually for her sister which she had already made like packaging materials so everything was already set in terms of brands so i had like a full brand guide to go off on so the way it kind of works um, is in terms of things come to, like when we when we get approached for things that kind of force when it comes to branding on websites, she's kind of the first point of entry. So she goes ahead and designs a logo, color it up, the whole brand guy. And then I kind of take it from there. I'm like, okay, we, and that's and that's how it's really worked. We kind of like fed off each other in terms of like when I see what she's put together, it kind of inspires me. Actually, speaking about this yesterday, she actually showed me a brand guideline she did for one of the brands we're about to work, do websites for as well. And it just kind of like, you know, it affects a different creativity. Um, so we've kind of like, you know, fed off each other in terms of that sometimes when I do some websites, she goes back and says, okay, I think I might need to refine this on the brand identity. So we've kind of like fed off each other creatively um, and it's just been smooth you know from the beginning up to up until now so i'm kind of privileged to have also had that as well yeah that's fantastic because your designs what i love about them they're very very interactive and like i think the the animations are really baked into the brand so how do you how do you work on this is this also a collaboration does this come from you seeing the design and thinking how can we animate this and how can we work this or like how did how did that partnership work so in terms of the website animations in particular one one of the key things i think of in terms of creative is when I start with the designs, I think of may, maybe just really started with the basic aspect of things in terms of just making it the structure of it and the entire design of it without any of the animations, it needs to look nice. Like the layouts is one of the first things I really start with. And it starts with, can I look at this on the screen without it, anything moving and it looks really nice? So once we get to that point, and then I have all of the other pages done and all of the other elements done, it's a case of how do I connect all of these in a way that is seamless and that tells a different story. I think that's a very big part of myself and also being kind of like a fashion interested. So one of the key things for me is how do I connect things in a way that feels very fluid so literally when i sometimes i don't even have the answers all the way up to the point when i start actually doing the development aspect in fact the last side i did there's a scroll there's a grid list and a list view and how it switches in between i didn't have any answer i just knew i wanted to make it work and feel seamless and it's a case of like experimenting trying out different things and saying oh, okay and sometimes they're actually mistakes like you just tried something and it's like okay it does a different thing it's like okay that's interesting how do i tweak this a little bit more as it's, it's comes from experimentation and just trying to be creative in that sense and that's how the animation aspect ties in but I think from a first basis is really about the actual layout itself. Does it look good? Because I'm quite editorial. And so it's a case of like, does this look good on paper? Like if I saw this in the poster, does this look good? Okay, now it's on the web. How do we make it feel interactive and fluid in terms of transitions and everything? That's that's typically the flow for me. So some of the sometimes, if I understand correctly, you're figuring it out as you're building. It's not like you have all of the mock-ups, here's the desktop, here's the the mobile, here's how the animations now go execute. You're figuring out as part of the build. Exactly, exactly. Um and I think sometimes. Sometimes I don't even design mobile aspects of things. One thing I always do though is that I make sure that like whatever I'm doing on desktop, it needs to work on mobile. I don't compromise in terms of the experiences that people get. So it's the case that if it, do, if it doesn't fit into the mobile world, I should not be doing it on desktop. So sometimes it's a case of like, you know, making sure that functionality is still key and people get the best experiences across the board. So I, I sometimes just go in, just go in. I think sometimes you can be halted when you're overthinking the designs and you, you can just limit yourself. So sometimes I just, I just go in and just try to make the best I could possible um, and just experiment from there and, you know, never know what comes out of it. Sometimes I don't have any idea. It's a case of it just happens and, you know, um, by just playing around and that's the best way I think of figuring out how to um, create something refreshing and new because again, you're also limited by your ideas and when you that preformed ideas you can be limited by that as well but if you're playing around and figuring out new things as, as you go along and also doing a research of like okay what are other people doing like what's what's happening here and also being inspired by other forms of media um, one thing i try to watch these days is advertising campaigns um, because there's also a lot of you know creative work they do in terms of like how they link different things so it's a case of okay this transition that did they have how do i make this my own on the web as well um so it's also you, really you're talking about tv ads or like video ads yeah tv ads video ads um even like music videos um the way Way they do transitions because they're video graphers so the way they think about you know if you watch some of the apple um you know events and how they make things transition from a stage into the, the the way the atmosphere is you know so i'm very much inspired by those kind of things and thinking of how how people are being creative in other forms of media and tying that into the web as well that's fantastic okay so we've heard about the first project and then in a relatively very short time now you're winning awards and like doing amazingly well yeah. how did that happen like what's the how do you get from a to b i, I wouldn't even know per se i think the, the key thing was just in case of like just doing good work focusing on the work i think that was the most 
important part. I'm very bad at also sharing work. That's that's actually a thing because I've actually we've done a, quite a lot of work that never never been put out. But, um, but one thing I do know is also being a bit strategic in terms of um, so quite early on, I really wanted to know what the big people in the industry were doing, how they were going about you know putting out their projects, how they were going about you know running the business. Um, and obviously one of the key things I saw was you know trying to get recognition in the industry by obviously listing your work on awards and, and different places. Um, so the key thing for me was also trying to position myself to be in that kind of space. And when we did our portfolio, which is kind of, to be honest, the third side we did, I was kind of in school at that point in time. So I was working in it for about three, four months. It was kind of like a very hectic period. And then we made the portfolio and listed it on awards and it got an award um, side of the day and developers award. And it just made me feel like, okay, if I could do this in the first set of, you know, what sites I'm doing and winning this kind of prestigious award, then there's actually a position here and I should try as much as possible because we saw a growth from there. We saw a couple, a couple of clients hit us up in terms of like, oh, we saw your work in awards. We want to work with you. We love what you did, how you interact with it. So they people still comment on certain elements of those portfolios. So we know the value it also brings beyond just, okay, it's an award, but in terms of like recognition from other people, um, but designers and client, prospective clients. Um, so we've tried as much as possible to when we do very good work to try as much as possible to list it out there to the world to see. And that's basically how we've been about it. And we've been privileged to win a couple of awards along the way. We don't take that for granted. It's not an easy thing to do to, to you know achieve and other people recognizing that your work is good. So we've just been privileged in that sense. Do you, in a way, filter your clients for a specific, to be able to build these kind of like creative, animated, beautiful looking website? Do you say no to a client who's like, maybe you're thinking, ah, oh, that won't look good in my portfolio or they won't need, or they would want something simpler. Do you think about that when you're picking your clients? I, I do think there's been a bit of a conscious effort to be selective, but also I think that the, the filtering has also happened naturally, organically. I don't think when I started, I know obviously what I did watch a lot of like, you know, some stuff related to web design and talking about, you know, niching down and having a certain area that you work with. I think as much as possible, I tried to be as broad in the beginning. Somehow, some way, it's just ended up being a thing where naturally the clients have filtered themselves, even in terms of location. Majority of our clients are actually Americans. I would say 90% of our clients are Americans. And a lot of them are actually photographers, videographers, people in the, in the in the lifestyle industry, which is kind of what we have always wanted to work with. I think when you do certain work with certain people, other people alike would just come as well and feel like, okay, you know, I've seen the work you did for my friend who's a photographer. I'm a photographer too. I want my website to also be unique. And in that sense, there's been kind of like a selective natural filtering into the kind of clients we work with. And obviously the, the kind of work they do is, is pretty impressive as well. So it kind of just helps also, you know, feel, feel that kind of um, creativity that we have. So there's been a bit of a, sometimes we do we're quite selective in terms of, okay, this is a brand that doesn't really fit our ethos in terms of like, you know, we don't really do corporate type of clients. We've done some work with that, but then it's more in terms of like, you know, infographics that are, you know, interactive as well, building out like, you know, responsive chats and all of that stuff. But majority of our work falls within the lifestyle industry. So we are very much, you know, interested or intrigued when we get that, that kind of inquiry. But also, I think there's also been a way in which these, these clients themselves have always found us and we've just naturally never had to really think too much about, you know, selecting clients because the right clients are always finding us because we're doing that work in that space. So I think it's also important that you're doing work in the space that you're also interested in. And then over time, you just kind of had no new the base in that sense. That's interesting. So you've mentioned that most of your clients are Americans. So we have a lot, you know, of, of students and people are in our audience who are in Africa or in India and they feel limited. They're like, oh, where I work, people don't value, you know, design. They're not willing to invest in high-end websites. And you've managed to somehow crack this and find the great clients, US clients. I hope they're they're paying well. Yeah. What do you think is the key to that? So I think it's a thing of putting out work. I don't think, I think, yes, there's, there's they're right in terms of the um, conversation regarding uh, sometimes the work is not necessarily valued, especially in terms of the compensation of the amount you're getting for the work that you're doing with certain clients, certain locations. But I do think that if you do put out work, you can be found. Um, regardless of where you are. Um, and I know there's been a lot of success stories in that aspect of like, you know, you can be in Brazil, you can be wherever you are in the world. If you put out work in a place, in a, especially in a global platform where people are actually going to see the work, you can be found. So I think it's really a case of just put out your work. If it's good enough, people would find you in that space and also be very intentional about how you go about it. So like I said, in the beginning, it was a case of setting up all the foundations for that. So for example, you have to be a workflow expert. So we're obviously listed on the expert directory so we get clients from that aspect. And which to be honest, they're not, they might be there. So clients are will be by location, but a lot of them are just looking at the work. They just want to find somebody who aligns with what they're doing. So the case of they're not going to look, oh, is this person in Nigeria? Is this person in, in America? They just want to know, okay, is this person's work good enough? So it's a case of strategically positioning yourself in certain areas where you can be found um, and that kind of would work for you as you grow along the space. I don't think we've ever really necessarily targeted any area. Like I said, we've just listed out the work and we've just been found by, you know, being the workflow experts, by being winning certain words, putting on work on Instagram, working with certain people and then they tell their friends. It's just a case 
case of like, if you can even start with one person and, or even like, you know, reach out to one person, work with, with whoever your client base, wherever you want them to be. If you can, you have a footprint in that particular location and it will grow like that in that sense. If you do good work, it's just about doing the work. Usually you would be in three different locations, you in the UK, your partner in Nigeria, client in the US. How do you manage the project remotely? Do you go on calls? Do you do it async? Like what does your client relationship or process looks like? Uh, my part is actually in the UK as well. Yeah, we kind of like we're in Nigeria at the same point that we put now in the UK. So you do you have a st- space that you're working together from? Um, we mostly work from home, um, but sometimes obviously because we're friends, we're around each other as well. Um, so we can work in the same area as well. But in terms of the client relationship, so we've kind of like, it's again, kind of like naturally set it itself. So we work primarily during the day in the UK time. And then we just have client meetings in the evening time, the UK time, because obviously that's the afternoon times. And that's typically how it's kind of like work across board. So we just kind of know, walk during the day, evenings have your meeting and then just go sleep and just have a rest day and wake up again, repeat in that sense. But that's typically how it's, how it's worked in terms of managing clients. And it's kind of like in some sense kind of worked because, you know, getting towards the day, you then, you can find off your day, you just having a meeting and having a clear idea of what you're going to do the next day or what you have to do the next day. And then just working your way through it in that sense. So that's typically how it works. But we do have a lot of calls, um, like, like I mentioned in terms of like when she's working on brand identity, as she's making stuff and shaping up the brand she's talking me through our process of like okay this is the intentions this is what the client said about what she wanted for the logo or typography and this is the movement that we're thinking about and then that kind of already um gives me some preformed ideas before i even work on the website of okay you know there's a tagline that the client that they really like so how do i really make that a central piece in the, in the website so i start thinking and having those ideas based on what she's forming already and we just kind of like you know go in that type of loop do most projects include both branding and a website as part of the package um i would say a good 60 70 percent um, do include both um, because again I think it is quite important and we also try as much as possible to also let clients know that like you know it's it's, it's good to invest in your branding beyond just the website because I genuinely would say I don't think the website I do would be as nice as they have if not for her because she does a great work in terms of selecting typography and the colors and logos that sets a whole different mood that gives it a different type of feeling so I think it's very important and one thing we definitely don't really not ever miss out is typography I think that's 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 one of the key things is like you might not want a logo color whatever it is it can be black and white whatever but the typography is very important because that communicates a different visual language so it's very important that we get that right in terms of how we communicate in your brand or your person um so typography is definitely always kind of included in the web um logos and colors um depending on the client or whether you know you just want a straightforward portfolio then that's fine we can we can bounce above that but type, somehow they've always kind of I, again it's again seeing the work so when we communicate of like okay you came to us you, you said you only want a website but this website that you're referencing from another photographer or for the production company but the reason why it's like this is because we also did the selection of the color we also did the logo and you can see how that evokes a different feeling so in that sense they've already seen how that helps in terms of the website so it's very easy for them to also you know key into that aspect of how a brand identity is a very important aspect uh, if not one of the most important aspects on the site beyond just the you know photography as well i think those, those two things are key once you have good photography and you have good brand identity i think that your website has a very high chance of you know standing out as well i think the problem is these days a lot of designers try to opt in or they immediately look for free fonts and that might be very kind of like limited. Do you have like a selection of your favorite foundries or like the secret places to find the best phones? I, I think the best places to ask that with my partner actually. I, I used to like, you know, love typography and try to find that. But when you realize somebody's much better than you, you just keep up that type of stuff. Okay, have a look at that and, and it's going to be good. But I think there are definitely a lot of places. I think one of the places that might come to mind is Swiss type. That's definitely a, place, a good place to find funds. I know there's a place I've missed off the top of my head because it's kind of been a long time. I Was that it. Swiss type or Swiss type? Um, Swiss type, yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, got it. There's actually a place, it, it skips my mind, but obviously Pine Pan, 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 is also obviously a very good place to also find good funds. And yeah, you just, again, you have to work with the client's budgets because yes, they're, they're, they're good funds that, you know, can cost you in, in the hundreds or thousands. But then there's also good funds that, you know, it could be just a hundred, for example, and that's it's really impressive. So I think there is a there is a front for every single client. There's, just, there's a certain budget range which you can reach that you can actually find, you know, good work. You don't have to overspend. You don't have to always create. Sometimes even from the funds are out of eight months. It's just being, you know, very um, diligent enough to to go over the list and see what works and experiment and wish she does a fantastic job at doing it. So I don't really have to, you know, crack my head on all those kind of stuff because she does a wonderful job in that sense. Fantastic. Who's doing the sales calls with the client? Oh, uh, we pretty much jump on every call. Like depending on what they say they want. So if it's only web, then I jump on the call initially. Um, I talk to them. If then they have an interest in brand and I see like we then have a shared follow up call where we talk through the entire process because we do. So initially it's always an intro call, and then after the intro call we then have a proposal call, and at that point that's when we have. 
have a clear identity of like the entire scope and then that's when we can have a full fledged aspect but if it's both a case where it's both brand identity and websites we will jump on the call have a conversation because we are very conversational as well because we have to have a clear idea of who we're speaking to what their language is what their body movement is every single aspect of the person actually shapes a lot into the designs that we do and just trying to find that person in the work that we do as well so we do we, we are pretty much on every call so considering what you know right now if you could talk to your yourself two years ago was there anything that you would do differently or that you know you would tell yourself to avoid some of these mistakes or yeah learn how to say no to clients from the beginning i think when you when you're too nice you can get exploited um so i think at the beginning obviously you felt like somebody's paying you money now so you feel like you have to answer to every single thing they want um you have to create every single thing they want even though sometimes you know that you even took the job on the budget and it's not really what you you really feel is what the pay um you still feel like they paid you money so i need to do the work for them to be satisfied and that's a very important argument in terms of like client satisfaction is obviously important they have to obviously love the website they do for the work that you're doing for them but at the same time you cannot be creating the world for them on a very low, low, um, low budget as well um, and you also have to be realistic in terms of what you can do and what you can what you can't do as well and managing those expectations of where it's a case of okay this was the brief that we had initially this was the scope that we were trying to build for you but now what you're asking for is a bit more than what we initially charged you for would you be open for a b and c um, and having that kind of conversation early on rather than saying yes 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 because once you start doing yes 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 then it becomes okay but you said yes before for this so why am i paying you for, for C now. So I think one, one thing definitely was a case of knowing how to manage expectations, charging for the work that you do, and also being bold and brave and stepping up to, towards things. So I think that's one important aspect. One other aspect I think I'm still learning to today is managing clients. I think you get a very excited of prospects and feeling like, okay, you want to create it all. Like, you know, they found me, they, they, they want to work with me, they want to pay me. So why am I saying no to it? Um, so try to be a little bit more selective. Sometimes I think I'm still struggling with that in terms of like over um, working myself in terms of the workload and just accepting every single body in in terms of like once it feels like okay this could be good I'm, I'm jumping on it you're trying to manage your schedule and your on your safe on your um, time in order to not be um, overloaded with work is very important because you need that time to think design is actually very intensive on the mind in terms of trying to be very creative all the time because one thing we also try to do is never have two sides ever look the same that we do we tr we're always trying to find a different angle towards an experience that we're building because we see it an experience there's no point in which every single experience feels the same and that type of aspect of working with the same for example we do a lot of portfolios and every single time a different portfolio has to be very different in terms of the experience it is very intensive it takes a lot of time to think about these things and how they should actually flow experiment and all those aspects so it, it, it is actually a very intensive period and you need time to actually settle down with it and actually think about it and go full on deep on it so i think it's very important to also be very selective so you can have the time to deliver on, on the projects and deliver on quality as well so it's, it's very important amazing so what is next for you guys like do you have like a goal for the next year for the like is some, some place where you're trying to get to now? I think personally for me, I think where we want to get to is a case of, so I do a lot of the designs and development myself. We're trying to, I think we've been trying to hire and hire, get more people on the team. Um, we did have an illustrator, um, we did have a look at person for 3D and motion, but at the same time, I think we're just trying to hire a bit more on the team, have more visual designers. I mean, if anyone is listening, if portfolio is good, please hit me up. And we would definitely want to be a bit more hands-off in terms of things. I want to be a little bit more on the technical side in terms of building out things, um, because beyond just workflow, we build custom Shopify websites. We build custom sites as well. It's not just like workflow at the moment. Because um, one key aspect of myself is actually I learn a lot. I spend a lot of time learning, like at least. Yeah, I just saw that you're starting to learn backend. Yeah, yeah. Doing some backend yeah. stuff. So I spend almost six hours of my day every single time trying to learn something new. Because if you are still the same person, the same experiences, the same things you've seen, you would always be stagnant. So every single day I try to push the boundaries of what I can do. Um, so actively I'm trying to learn in terms of that. Um, so obviously there's less time to was doing every single thing I was doing from the beginning and obviously realizing that you know it's, it's good to also lay up work to people who are you know, sometimes much better than you and I don't think I'm fantastic in design as well so it'd be good to have somebody who's like or it's grow a team that have people who can bounce it creatively um, I think the, the bigger idea of our projects would be just being the two of us and how we collaborate is a case where we have a group of individuals who are very specialized in what to do so you know somebody very good at animation somebody very good at 3D somebody very good at illustration, illustration design development and we all sit on the table like okay this is how we want to push it and have that collaborative you know talk about how we want to push 
the boundaries of what we're building. That would be the ideal next goal for us. But hiring is very hard. So we, we've been trying to hire, but it's, it's been very hard to find the right talent um, that we kind of match. Because we are also very close knit of team. So we want whoever is on the team to not just be an employee, but a, a team member that we can be friends with, that we can share up idea and feel like, you know, because we, 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 can, we can have calls like 11 p.m. and that feels very natural for us. So we want to feel like a family or friends um, rather than, you know, a company that is, you know, having strict employees. So we really want to find the right selected partners. So I think the ideal goal for us will be expanding on the team, having bigger people who can help you know, infuse the different levels of creativity um, and help push push the boundaries because we're really about pushing the boundaries. Amazing. And I want to tell you from my experience because, yeah, hiring is very difficult and it's the same insight that you had about clients. You have to say no to a lot of people if you want to make sure you find the right one, if you want to make sure that the quality is high, which is tough. It's tough to say no to potential teammates as it is to to clients. McKenna, thank you so much for sharing your, your journey and your story with us. I really appreciate it. Famous last words you want to leave us with? Uh, famous last words, um, I would say always keep learning. Always try to find the right places. And also thank you so much for the platform that you're doing. Um, a lot of times it can be very overlooked in terms of where you started from and like people who have pushed the boundaries for you to be able to, you know, know what and do what you have, um, what you do. Um, so again, thank you so much for um, your setup and, you know, touching a lot of people regardless of location and also, you know, helping shape the, the platform for future developers. So again, thank you so much for your platform. Keep doing what you're doing um, and to everyone out there keep learning try to find the right places keep pushing yourself and um, hopefully all things will work out in the end amazing thank you so much talk to you soon bye bye